Okay, I did this one last night. So let's uh, come into our CSS. And so we got a sidebar over here. All the rest of this page, don't worry about it. It just happened to be on the page when I did this last night. So we got a sticky side menu right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tell it to turn off the position fixed on it. And what it should do then is drop it back down to the bottom where I built it. And this is how I normally build my fixed sidebars is in this case here, it's right down here at the bottom and I built it. Let me go back in here and kill some more of this CSS. All right. So now all the CSS should be turned off. So how I like to do this is I like to build my anything I'm going to make into something that's going to be sticky somewhere where it's going to be fixed somewhere on the screen like this column right here. And if anybody jumps in, just let me know if you're here live or not. So how I normally build it is I will build it as a section down at the bottom of the page. So here we came in, we built a section right here and I'm pretty sure, let me see here, I made it a small width and then could even go extra small on this, even though I don't think that's an option when you originally turn the thing on or when you originally build the section, I think it doesn't have the extra small. And then inside of here, normally I'll come in and I normally will take out all of the padding, margins, anything like that. In this case here, looks like I left a little bit of padding in. And then all I did is I dropped in an image element. It was one I had from a, from a different site I was building one day. And then I put in some menu items like this, and then I put uh, another image down at the bottom just to take up some space. And then all you say is take this whole thing right here and fix it to the upper left-hand corner and make it 100% width. I'm sorry, 100% of the height of the page. That way it makes up an entire sidebar from top to bottom. So you can make that a menu. You can make it you know, just um, instructions. It could be like a sidebar for a blog type of a thing. It could be anything you want. And then all the rest of the page will scroll up and down and the left sidebar will stay fixed. And of course you can fix it to the right hand side as well. Instead of saying left zero pixels, you say right zero pixels. So now let's go back into that CSS and take a look at that. So scroll down to the bottom. So we have here the container. What I'm saying here is every container on the page, because what I wanted to do is I wanted to make the sidebar 20% the width of the page and the rest of the page be 80% of the width of the page. So I'm going to say here, make the sidebar, which is this container right here. So that's the CSS ID selector for that section. I'm saying make that width of 20% percent of the viewport width. So 20 VW is 20% of the viewport width. And I'm saying up here, container, which would be every other, every single section on the page, not every other one, every single section will have the class of container. And what I'm saying there is make every single container 80% of the viewport width. And I want those all floating to the right hand side of the screen. Because if I didn't float them right, they're naturally gonna wanna float left and it's gonna go behind my fixed sidebar. So we're gonna float it to the right to make it go away from the fixed sidebar. So then we have our, our sidebar section right here. Like I said, so it's position fixed. It's top zero and left zero. So again, gonna go right up here in the upper corner. Height of 100% of the viewport height. And then again, the 20%. Now, the reason I put important here is to 100% make sure that it overrides the 80 I put up here. Because this 80 VW, 80% 80 of viewport width up here is for every single container. Now I'm saying, well, this container down here, I want that to only be 20% of the viewport width. So in that case, um, I want to put on important just to make sure it overrides it. It should anyway, because it's down lower in the code. Anything down at the bottom of the code will override anything at the top of the code. But in this case here, I just wanted to, you know, belt and suspenders on this one. And then I say the column. So the column inside of here, inside of this column, you got, I'm sorry, inside of this section, you have a one column row. And inside of the one column row, you have one column, of course. And what I'm saying there is I want that to be, we're going to make a calculation here. 
I want the height of this column to be the 100% of the viewport height minus 80 pixels. And where does that 80 pixels comes from? Is because I want there to be, or I have on here a total, let me click out of here, I have in this element right here, let me see if I can move this thing. I have in here between the padding around the section, if I can get the section to open, well, let's go up here to sections, manage, and we'll come all the way down to the bottom, last section here. And so here I got 20 pixels on the top and 20 pixels on the bottom for padding on that section. And then inside of the row, we'll come down and look at that last row. So it's a one column row. And inside of there, I have again 20 top padding and 20 bottom padding. So four times 20 is 80 pixels. And so I'm saying make this, once we put it over here, make this 100% of the viewport height minus those 80 pixels worth of padding because then that will give us just what is the, the height of the middle part inside of here. If I just did 100% viewport height, what it would do is it would start down 40 pixels and it would push the image here right off the bottom of the screen and you wouldn't even see it. So let's go back to our CSS because we're almost done taking a look at that right now. And then we're going to say here, um, this, uh, this bottom image down here, I wanted this bottom image position absolute bottom zero. So again, we had top means zero pixels from the top. If you do bottom, it means zero pixels from the bottom and the position absolute similar to fixed fixed says put this in a very specific place on the screen and don't move it what absolute says we want to fix it according to the parent element that is sitting inside of so we're saying here inside of this column which is right up here so inside of this column we want this image absolutely fixed to the bottom so that's what all this does let me turn my CSS back on and we will see our result right here. And in fact, let me save this and then we will preview the page. So here we go. So we have our sidebar here now, built it down at the bottom, said put it over here on the left hand side. And again, here is that image absolutely positioned at the bottom of this column and we don't run off the bottom our you know it's not too tall for the page here because we subtracted off the 80 pixels worth of padding that we had in here so let me see what else I had open because like I said I've done a lot of sidebars I'm just having trouble finding some of them because I spent uh, most of my time since last night building out um, the big thing I'm going to show you here in a minute so there's that. So now here's one that I built. And actually, let me click on preview. Here's one that I built as a membership site. So I built a sidebar into a membership site. And what I have here is I have a menu coming up here at the top once this thing gets done loading. So we have a menu and I set it so that the menu would be open or visible when we loaded up the page and now you can click up here and what it'll do is it will close that menu so you're gonna see here you got a little bit of an animation right here these bars turn into an X and they spin around a little bit but then also what happens is the sidebar comes flying in and then here we use this as the navigation to go through the different elements or the different lessons inside of the training area. So there's another way that you can build out a, a sidebar is you basically build this as a two column row and you just say that when you click that button that you want the size of the of that row to expand to greater than the size of the viewport uh, so that it actually goes right off the screen is really how this is done. So it's a pretty simple solution on this one. So let me kill a couple of these tabs here. So here was the site, like I said, um, so Catherine was talking to her brother 
Tanner yesterday about some code snippet things he's got going on. And he showed this site here because what he wanted to do was to fix this this sidebar over here. So make it stuck to the left-hand side and then using his code, take what he had built into um, his, his section and then spread it out top to bottom like this. Well, so I decided, well, I'm going to go to the site because I saw a lot of moving things on this site. And including here, so if I if I hover over any one of these pictures, you're going to see here, so the word adopt moves up, goes from white to yellow, and then 1,520 dogs happily adopted comes flying in basically from behind it. Starts off smaller and gets a little bit bigger. So that's, a, that's an animation there. I've, I've built similar to this before. And then the the one that I thought was cute is as you scroll on the page, watch the dog up here. As you scroll on the page, the word donate actually rotates around his head. So I could definitely see doing that. You'd have to get an image and then you could rotate it based upon the scroll on the page. That would be doable. But also here, as you hover over the dog, he puts his hands together like he's praying or saying thank you or something. So um, that's kind of cute. So then over here again, same stuff with um, every one of these images as you scroll over it. But what I found interesting and what I decided to build out was this. And uh, I don't know if Tanner, he, Tanner certainly did not click on it while he was showing it to us. Um, whether he had ever or not, I don't know. But so you click on it and the whole thing slides. And if you look at how this happens is the entire page slides to the right is how it does it. So you see the dog start to go off the side of the screen as it moves over. And then inside of here, you got a hover effect. So you hover over these and it gets darker in the text. And then you can also open up a drop down menu. And when you do it, there's a little, there's a little arrow there. You can barely see it, but it, it flips upside down. So it flips up and down like that. And so we have that. And then when we go to mobile, let me close that. Let me go skinny this down. So when we go down to mobile, they have the bar drops down to the bottom. They have two bars down here to activate the mobile. I didn't like that. I, 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 used, uh, I used buttons on it. And then you do this, and they slide in from the right-hand side. Again, something I didn't like here is you lose that bottom bar. So when I rebuilt it, I left the bottom bar in, and I left my hide show, my menu closed down there. And so that is that. So that's what I'm going to show you here for the next um, 20 minutes or so, 30 minutes, because uh, i got to get off before 4 o'clock because uh, Catherine and Tanner are coming back on again today. So what we got here let me show you my version of this so here we go now this part over here i didn't really build this i was just mostly looking at the sidebar the menus that kind of stuff and so we have our uh, little puppy dogs over here and we have our wild at heart at the top and the little dog at the bottom and then we will click on menu and when we click on menu the whole thing moves over and then we can just toggle this back and forth. And you see here the word menu changes to the word close. That is just a button, and that's a built-in function inside of ClickFunnels. And then up here what I did is, I know a lot of people think you can't put in submenus and things like that and inside of ClickFunnels, but actually, it's, it's frankly, it's quite simple. And so there we go. We put in our drop-down menu inside of our menu, and then as we click on it, the button, or I'm sorry, the little arrow over here flips top to bottom, just like that. I have a couple others here where I got in the, the little arrow, but I don't have them. Um, I don't have a sub menu set for those. I just frankly just didn't have time. Plus, once you do it once, you know how to do it. So that is for desktop. And then on mobile, here we go. So I got my wild at heart here and the menu and the dog again. And so you can scroll up and down. Well, at least you should be able to scroll up and down on here. Well, for some reason you can't, but let's uh, click on menu. And you see here when we go to menu, it just slides it down from the top and then back up again. And then again, you can also have your sub menus built right in here. 
as well. So let's take a look at how we're going to build this thing. And the first thing I have is I have all of the CSS turned off so we can see exactly how to build out the elements first. All this is up here at the top is a two section, or it's a section with a two column row in it. I gave it a data title of body just because more and more as I get into this and the more of the writing of code I'm doing, uh, I'm just, I'm really using data titles a lot more all the time. So if we look here, so you just come in here, you change it to body and you click on update. So I already had that done. And again, inside of this section, I took out all of the padding, all the margin, everything I took out of here just because, and I just, well, I got a background color in there, but I don't need it because I have everything covered with images. Then inside of the row, I have a two column row up here at the top for the body. And again, took out absolutely everything inside of it. And then... Um, what this is, these two images here are actually, let me come in here to the columns. They are a background image for that column. So here's our first column and I just grabbed the link off of their page and just dropped the link in here and I set it to no repeat. Now in the CSS code then what we're going to do is we're going to tell it to, first off, we're going to get rid of the padding because, you know, in ClickFunnels, they got padding around everything. So we got to remove a lot of the padding. And then we say that we want this image to cover the entire row and to be 100% of the height of that column. And uh, <clears throat> in the case of the original, this dog over here pretty much takes up the entire page the entire time, except when you get to the very bottom. Whereas over here, you would have to come in and you probably, in that case there, you would have to probably put in a bunch of elements, images stacked one on top of each other, and then give each image, make sure it went full width inside of the column, and then you would set it for whatever height was appropriate for it. And then, of course, you got all the hover effects and all that, but I wasn't building that into this today. Okay, so down here at the bottom then, we have a, a, we have a section again. And in that section, I took out all of the padding, I do believe. Let's just open it up and see. Uh, yep, all the padding, everything is out of there. Section width is small. That's fine because we're going to just, we're going to tell each one of these columns how wide we want it as we put it into the other. Same thing here with the row, take out all the padding and everything else. Because again, all we're really looking at is the columns. Even though for one of them, we're going to move the entire, I think it's just the row, we move it into into the sidebar, but the other one we just take the column itself. And so in here then we come in and we just, this is just nothing more than a series of text elements. So we're just gonna dump in, um, so here's, I called this left menu, but it is a, a subheadline element that I gave the data title of left menu. And I just stacked a whole bunch of them in here on top of each other. And so if you come down to one like adopt, we'll go in there and we will look at the, we'll look at the data title on that one because that one, not only did it get a t data title of left menu, it also got a data title of sub menu. And the reason why then is you can target it and you can say, okay, all of these elements that have the title or have, <clears throat> excuse me have the data title of sub menu in it that contain sub menu in the title we want to append that caret to so you had the little uh let me see here so you had the little the little down arrow here by telling by giving it the data title of sub menu we can tell it to target it and put that little caret uh, at the end of it like that and so then you just you type it in and then you click on uh, update and so then I'm missing one element here let me open this up and it's a sub headline element right here and so this again is how you do a drop-down menu 
You just come in, you put in a simple subheadline element, you put in what you want your text to be. Of course, if you want to have this be a hyperlink, you highlight it, you click on the chain, and you do yourself a hyperlink in there. And um, same thing with any of these other ones up here, you could turn them into hyperlinks. Now the one you're going to make submenus out of, you of course don't want to make those hyperlinks, or when somebody clicks on it, they're going to go somewhere else. You want that to open up the content. And again, we tell it very specifically in the code that when somebody clicks on this, <clears throat> that you want to show the content below it. So that's how it works, is the code says, when you click on this, slide this open and show us that content, and then flip the little carrot around as well. So then let me see here, um, on the right-hand column, then all I did is I just put in these three elements. So we got this, this is an image at the top, it's an image at the bottom, and in between there are two different, um, there are two different buttons. So let me find that button. So uh, desktop, yeah, okay. So we got a close button and an open button. And if I didn't say it, this background here, this blue background, that comes from being in the column. So we come down here, the first column here, we go in and we set the background color of that column to whatever greenish, bluish color that is. Now on these two buttons here, because we want to have a toggle effect, what we want to say is that when we click on, when it says menu, and we click on that button, what we want to do is hide the menu button and show the close button. And so let's just go into one of these here. We're going to close. And we come into set action. And then you say, show these. And we're just going to say, okay, well, when, when you click on the menu button, we want to, or sorry, sorry, we're on the close. We're doing the close right now. So when you click on the close button, we want it to show the menu button and we want it to hide the close button. And you do the exact opposite then for the other button. And so it basically just toggles them back and forth. And then with a little bit of code, that's how we tell it to open up the sidebar with a little bit of JavaScript code. So this, this is handled right inside of ClickFunnels, just boom, boom. Whereas the, the showing of the sidebar, that has to be triggered with a little bit of JavaScript. And I'll show you that in a minute. But let me see, I gotta come in here and close this button first. And then the other thing, let me see here. Oh, okay, it's not showing on here. So now let's go into mobile. So for mobile, what I did is I just, let me, I'll just show you. What I did is all I did is I cloned the top one. So I built out the top menu exactly how I wanted it. I built out the sidebar how I wanted it. And then all I did was I cloned it and then set that to mobile only because then it would um, obviously it would only show in mobile. So we have two different menus here. And um, I, I thought about how could I do it? And I was just like, I'm not even going to bother trying. It's so much simpler just to be able to do it as two different elements. And the code uh, actually for the mobile is much simpler than it is for the um, the rest of it. So now let's do this. Let's go in and we will turn on our, where is it here, our CSS, and we'll show you what's going on here. Now the first part up here, this is all pretty much to get these dogs to line up right. So it really has nothing to do with these menus. I say overflow hidden because there's you don't want a scroller on the right-hand side. Uh, because there wasn't one on the original. I don't think there was at least. Let me see here. No, I guess they did have one. Uh, but in my case here, because my page is so short, it was just, it was messing things up. So I had to turn that off. And then I said, uh, we want all the containers to be 100% the width of the screen. We want to get rid of all the padding around everything, all the padding around these dog images. And then we want to set these images uh, here, we want to set them to 100% of the height of the page, and we wanted their background position to be 50%, and so basically centered them on the page and to cover the entire region with the image. So basically, the image will go outside of the region it has to fit into. So that's uh, what we have there. 
And so again, that really has nothing to do with the menus. So now let's go here and um, let me see, what's the best way to do this? Because there's three different sections. We have the main content, which is the main body here again, the part that has the dog images in it. And so what we're saying here is we want to have the width of that section all the time. Because if you recall, let's take a look back here. So if you recall, there's a 70, this is 70 pixels wide right here. So this always is on the screen. So we want the part where the dogs are going to be in, we want that to be the viewport width minus those 70 pixels. So that's what the first line says here. Viewport width minus 70 pixels. We want it again to be 100% of the height. And then we're going to absolute position these pictures at the top to the right and have a transition of 0.5 seconds. And you'll see where the transition comes in here in a minute, which is when we move everything over, when the menu opens up, everything moves over and we set all the transitions to half a second so that they all move simultaneously. If you had one being one second and one being half a second and something else, you know, they're gonna move all jerky and stuff and look funny. So you wanna set all the transitions to be the same. And then we're gonna say here, and I'll show you the code on this in the JavaScript, we add a class to it and we say that when, when that menu button is clicked, we want to take this body section and move it right 250 pixels. So we're gonna move it off the screen and that's how we lose half of that dog is it moves it right and um, 250 pixels off the screen. And the 250 pixels is because that's the width of the menu element. So when we click on it, this menu element right here is 250 pixels wide. So when we click and open this up, this whole thing over here just moves to the right 250 pixels. So let's turn that content back on. And so you see it moved a little bit there over half a second as I changed its state it uh, moved. So then we have our left sidebar, which is the one that goes all the way off the screen. And we're going to have that being a position of fixed. So again, it's going to be in a very specific place on the screen all the time. And then it's going to be top zero and left minus 250. So before we had top zero, left zero all the time. Well, here we're going to have top zero, but left minus 250. So it goes all the way off the side of the screen over here. So it's, it's hanging out over here right now, or at least when I turn on the code, it will be. It's hanging out over here. You don't see it until we tell everything to move back to the right 250 pixels which is essentially what we're going to do. Another, again, transition of half a second to keep everything together. And again, here, we're just taking out padding. All that extra padding that ClickFunnels puts in, we're having to take that back out. And then here we're saying this particular column, like I said, we're mostly looking at the columns now, is we want it to be 250 pixels wide, like we've been saying all along, a height of 100% of the viewport, 100% of the page, and then in this case here, I gave it a little bit of padding, top and bottom, just so that the text wasn't bumping up against the top of the screen. And then again, up here we had open, open body. Down here I called it open left, so that from left we went from a minus 250 pixels. We're going to say go from minus 250 over to zero. So that's what makes that sidebar slide onto the screen is we change where it is fixed. And then the last one down here, um, all, all this is, is anytime somebody hovers over one of those left menu elements, which is all of these here, somebody hovers over that, it just changes the back or changes the text color to black. So let's turn that on. And what will happen is a lot of this stuff is going to start going off the side of the screen. So right now, what had been back here in the background as blue hanging out. You see this blue right here. That just went sliding off to the left side of the screen, off the screen by 250 pixels. And then we got our right menu bar, which is this one here that's still showing on the screen. I can skinny this down some. So it's that one right there. Right now it's all smushed together. And uh, so now we need to come in and tell it um, we want, again, position to be fixed. We want it top 
zero, left zero. So we want it going to be right up here in this corner, coming right down that side. Height of 100% again, width of 70 pixels. We had discussed that earlier. Transition again of half a second. And then here we're going to use flex. And so flex is a really super cool thing. I've done other videos about how you can use it. But in this case here, what we're going to say is you always, you always call the display flex from the element that is the parent of the elements you want to affect. Okay, so we're in the call inner right now. Every one of these elements is sitting directly inside of that call inner element. So we're telling it we want to use flex, which is a way of displaying items on the screen. And we're going to say flex direction column. Normally, its default would be row. So row would be this way, but we want them stacked on top of each other. So we're going to do flex direction column. And then we're going to say justify our content by putting space in between. So it's going to space them out top to bottom equally with space in between them. There's another one you can do space around where it'll give you equal amount of space around each of the items. Here we want equal space between the items. That'll push the top one all the way up to the top and the bottom one all the way down to the bottom. And I put a little padding in there to compensate for not going up, you know, getting jammed up to the top too far. So I put some padding in there in that element in that column to um, bring that down a little bit. And then on these buttons here, we have to get them to be sideways. You see this, this button is sitting here sideways like that. So all we do is we come in for the two different buttons, the, uh, the menu button and the close button, and we say transform this button by rotating it minus 90 degrees. So it starts off like this and then rotates it minus 90 degrees, positive 90 would be this way. But, you know, once you put in the numbers, you'll figure it out real quick. And then again here, we got open right. I had up here, open left and open body. We're going to open that right-hand element, and we have to move that now from left zero to left 250 because we had the left menu coming in, and the left menu is 250 pixels wide. So we have to move everything again over 250 pixels. And so I will turn that back on. And so now everything is lined up over here. And don't worry about the fact it's off the top of the screen up here. It's because this black ribbon is in the way. And then down here for mobile, got the exact same thing. So you saw we, we built it exactly the same for mobile. So then in our left column, we're going to do exact same thing as before. Fixed, top zero, left zero. And here I had to use minimum width. I tried just doing width of 100 100 viewport, it wouldn't let it work, so I put in minimum width, worked just fine. Sometimes you just got to play with it. Height of 100%, overflow visible, just in case you opened up a bunch of um, submenus in there. I wanted to put in overflow visible so that a sidebar or a, um, a scroller would pop up, and then you could scroll down if need be. Otherwise, you'd push stuff off the bottom, and you couldn't see it. And another little quirk I found as I was building this is that I tried to say that I wanted the column to be hidden to, to begin with. It wouldn't let me do it, and it wouldn't work right if I did. So then here I had to just come in and say display none on this column inside of the CSS instead of doing it inside of the elements or inside of the columns inside of ClickFunnels. And then I did a column right, and I did display flex again like we did up top. And so now, now this, the, the column right is going to be the little tab down at the bottom. Let me show it to you here. That's going to be this one down here. This is column right. This was column left. And so we're doing that, and we're saying the same thing again, justify content, space between. But now in this one here, we did not put in the flex direction of column because we want to leave it as the default, which would be flex direction row because we want it to be horizontal, position fixed, and we did bottom of zero instead of top of zero, so it hooks it to the bottom of the page instead of the top of the page. Left of zero, so it's going to start on the left edge. And then again, I did a minimum width, and I did that 100% of the viewport width. And so that's all of the CSS, and I got uh, only a few minutes left here. So let me get into the tracking code really quickly because it's, it's pretty basic. So when somebody clicks on that menu button. Somebody clicks on this menu button right here. What do we want it to do? We want it to do three things because we got to get 
all three of these elements to move to the right hand side. We got to get the, the left menu, the right menu, and the body all have to move 250 pixels to the side. And so what we do is we take each one of those elements. So I take this entire section and I say, add the body, add, add the class of open body, which says move it to the right 25, 250 pixels. Same thing with the container, same thing with the column right is we add that class and then it moves it to the right 250 pixels and then what we do when we hit the close button is we say okay remove that class and put it back where it was originally so that's what all this does right in that part there so then here we have it so that any element with the data title that contains sub menu which i showed you that earlier we want to append to it that icon and that's what this is you get this straight out of font awesome you just go there you get these icons you put that in there and you say okay we want to append that if it has that data title of sub menu and then uh, let me see here open open the sub menu and rotate icon on menu item click okay so when you click then so when I come in here and I click on adopt Okay, this is what we're talking about here. So this is the action we're triggering right now. So you click on Adopt. So when you click on Adopt, which is this headline right there, we want two things. We want to slide that sub subheadline below it where we had the four lines. That was a subheadline. We want to slide that down. So it says slide toggle over half a second. 500 milliseconds is half a second. So it says slide that down. And then also with that icon, we want to rotate that icon by um, 180 degrees and where we call that is right here rotate the icon transform and rotate 180 degrees just like we had seen earlier uh, with the rotation we had done earlier and then let me see here so that was it for opening that sub menu and then on mobile essentially it's the same thing when you click on the button the menu button in 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 the mobile it does the exact same thing. It opens up that uh, the it slides down that menu from the top, and then when you close on it, it slides it back up again. So a toggle is goes back and forth from whatever state. If it was originally hidden, it will show. If it was showing, it would hide it. So it just a toggle just goes back and forth, and a slide toggle means it slides down from the top. That's all that means. And then the last thing we had here, again, is what we had up here exactly. The same, because remember, we, we duplicated that section. And so because we duplicated that section, we have to duplicate the code. There's a you know, different way you can do it, but the simplest way is just to duplicate the code for this example. And then you will do the exact same thing. When you click on that headline element it will open up the sub headline element below it and it will rotate the icon so i went through that pretty quickly um but it's that's it now i mean did i build this thing out in two seconds no it took me i would probably say it took me probably five or six hours to um go through test everything figure out exactly how i wanted to do it but I think the result is actually really quite phenomenal. And then you add in whatever else. Now, I would not go as crazy as they did on this page here. There's just way too many moving parts and pieces on here and too many colors and, and everything else. But to come in, pick out a couple of little things that you like, whether it's on mobile or desktop or which one, uh, pick out a few that you like and then just use those. And, and again... This, uh, this drop-down menu could not be any simpler. And uh, sometime in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to put down, uh, together an entire presentation about all the different ways that you can create navigation inside of a ClickFunnels page. I started to work on it, then I got distracted by this project. Uh, but I think this was uh, cool enough to spend half a day on and uh, bang out a decent-looking decent, uh, decent -looking little template here. So... That's all I have for today. If anybody has any questions, just let me know.